Extracting data solves for one of the biggest problems that a lot of people encounter. Speed, how fast the actual report loads. So we're, today we're gonna to talk all about how to extract data, how you need to do it, and a few things to think about when you're strategizing your data collection for extracting data. But first, if you have not yet, download the cheat sheet um, and join the newsletter. It's, it's a good time. It's, uh, I write all the content myself and it's really fun. Uh, and you can hit reply to any email you get from me and get a response because hey, I'm a human, you're a human, let's have a chat. All right, so let's hop right into it. This is gonna be all about extracting data. So here, let's first talk about where to find the extracting data. When you go to add data, you have all of your data sources, all the different connectors, etc. If you scroll down just a little bit, you will see extract data by Google. This is, um, again, confusing when you first start because you're like, whoa, 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 what is extract data? But let's have a chit chat about it. What extracting data does is it's taking a snapshot, a snapshot for what we are trying to accomplish, right? So the snapshot is in rows and columns of information that you decide. Let's talk about this with in Google Sheets. So let's take a look at Google Sheets here. And imagine, for example, as you're, as you're doing this, you have, for example, users and page views, like let's just, for example, use GA4. GA4 is something that we're all gonna encounter. So let's just talk about it. So what you might have is you wanna extract data from your Google Analytics account. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first have the fields. So let's just say we have date, we have users, we have the page that the users were on, and then we have, I don't know, something else, uh, hits. The date, let's just say it's January 1st, 2022. Users was 3,000 or 300 on the page of home. Hits was, I don't know, 900, a three time ratio. Then we'll have January 2nd, right, 2022. And then we will have the number of users as, I don't know, 127. And a page was uh, also home and the number of hits was 324. So this is what we're creating. We are, when we extract data, we are explicitly giving um, the, a, a snapshot of the information. The problem that you're gonna run into is anything that is intraday or intradimensional because we're talking about uh, <laughs> all things that go in and out of those dimensions. The problem we're gonna run into is imagine right here if some of these people came back the next day. So let's just say that 20 people came back here and here. So they're counted twice. And if we then, for example, sum this up, you will see we now have 427 as opposed to 400, right? If those are people who counted twice. So that is something to keep in mind when you're extracting data. And I wanted to, focus on that first because a lot of people will gloss over that. That is anything that is intraday and intradimensional is going to have a duplication problem. I'll talk about a few ways to solve that, but let's, it's a problem, especially with Google Analytics. With, uh, for example, if you're using an, a third party like Facebook ads or anything like that, usually not a problem. Let's hop into it. So what you're gonna do is select extract data and I'm gonna move my little head out of the way in three, two, one, there we go. So in extract data, what you've got is this little panel that looks very similar to the blend. Um, what you wanna do is then you're gonna select a data source, you then have dimensions, metrics, date range, and filter. If we select this, we can then hop in here. Let's just look at our GA4 uh, master account. We then can decide which dimensions and which metrics we wanna choose. I am gonna use date. We are gonna then put event name. We are then gonna put users of total users. We are then gonna have total hits, or no, sorry, total events, event, I don't know why you total sometimes, event count. And then we will also have sessions. And let's throw in the full page uh, URL clean version um, there. So now we've got a, a date, right? So just, just, just to clarify, we now have a date, 
we have the event name, we've got the full page URL, which we've cleaned up. We then have total users, event count, and number of sessions. We could then add a filter if we want to, uh, and we can also add the date range. The date range is going to give you the amount of time that is gonna be extracted. I am gonna use this and we're gonna go back to, we're gonna use a custom date range and we're gonna go advanced and we're gonna say a fixed date of January, February, March 15th was when this site was launched. Today minus one day. So yesterday, all the way to March 15th. We're gonna hit apply on this. Then that's when it's extracted. And we're gonna say, when do we want to extract this? This is um, when we want to update this. I'm gonna turn this on. So then every single day at six, or sorry, at, at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, it's gonna get yesterday's date, right? Cause we're looking at this today minus one day. So that'll be yesterday. It's gonna grab that information. I'm gonna move this up to 6 a.m. And we're gonna say it's gonna repeat daily in Pacific Standard Time. What we're gonna do is hit save and extract. While it's extracting, this can take, I don't know, up to five minutes. While it's doing that, I'm gonna head, oh, we're fast. I'm gonna head over here, we're gonna head to date, and we're gonna recreate this here. So we have date as one. We then have the page path, or page full page URL. We then have the number of sessions, number of users, number of hits. Right, I believe that's all we had here. And now what you need to do here is we need to refresh this page. I'm gonna refresh, command R, and then we'll be able to find our extracted data. If we head up here to resources, manage added data sources, you will now see your extracted data source. It's gonna be called extract data. I don't know why, it's just they give you that. I'm gonna rename this to GA4 data studio dot VIP. And we're going to call this uh, page count. As you can see, we only ha have one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, metrics and dimensions. I'm going to hit save, we're going to hit close, and let's build something with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a chart. We're going to grab this, and we're going to add a control with a date range. And we're going to match actually a very similar, let's just do the last 90 days. Um, oh, let's just do the last, actually, let's do the last 90 days. So we're gonna do go to advanced, today minus 90 days, and we're gonna look at today minus one day. All right, so here we have our ex, uh, extracted data, right? GA4, uh, data studio page count. And if we hit on edit this, uh, we wanna actually, I usually add an E for extract before, so that I know it's an extracted data source, because sometimes you'll forget. So now what we'll do is we're gonna have this on the left side, our extracted data, and we're gonna also just for examples, put this on the right side with the default data source, which was our data studio geo for master. Right off the bat, you're gonna see something funky here, is this event count is, oh wait, let's put this on users. So we're comparing apples to apples. is this event count is wildly lower than this one. So let me just pull, again, apples to apples, full page URL clean. We've got 4,609 people on our extracted data source. We only have total users of 768 on our homepage for the uh, actual GA4. And if we look at this, let's just look at the last seven days, last 30 days, hit apply. In the last 30 days, we've had 723 users on this one and 115 over here. So as you can tell, that is a problem because of this exact situation. We've got date, full page, home, users, and it's adding up every single time the number of users who have hit that page. So that's the problem you run into. Like there's not many ways around it, um, I'll give you a couple of hacks here, but that is the problem. The beauty of this is, is if we change the date, right? And it, like here, that's 28, you can see how much faster the one on the left is. Because we're looking with a lower volume of data, you won't see it that much, but let's just add in a couple more things here. Let's add in a couple of scorecards. 
So let's just make sure we have the extracted data. We got total users. Um, we're going to add in, let's just add a number of sessions and let's add in the number of events. And let's do the same thing, copy and paste, head that over here. And we'll do the same thing for our other data source. So GA4, there we go. And so here, let just, just looking at this off the bat, you will notice total users, wildly off. Event count, wildly off. Sessions, wildly off. And that right there, guys, is the predicament that we are gonna run into with extracted data. The benefits though, is if we're using event count, it's gonna be spot on. So let me just change this and add in event count as well. All right, so here we've got event count, 933, 933, 100, 1, 149, it works. So just to let you guys know, if you are using extracted data, the way that we just talked about, run automatically, set it up, not too complicated now that you understand how it is, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. If this makes sense, right, if you're like, okay, I get it, we need to make sure that it's event-based. Or, big or here, we have a unique identifier for that user. What that means is if we're using GA4, we need to have a custom dimension of the actual pseudo user ID inside of the dimensions so that we can count the number of those unique IDs. We don't have that set up right now in GA4 because it's fairly complicated. I just don't want to overwhelm. That'll be another video. If you want, if you want that video, comment down below. So, well, the problem that we're going to run into here is that you cannot use any intraday things, users, sessions, anything that goes in between multiple days, multiple dimensions. Problematic. The benefit is anything that is not intraday, for example, say you're connecting Facebook ads to your data studio. Notoriously slow. It takes forever to load once you have more things. If you wanted to know how much you spent over a period of time, you can have that because spend is not intraday. You spent $1,000 by minute, by second, by hour, but not over a period of time that the same dollar is counted. But you will run into a problem with users. For example, say we're looking at Facebook and you wanted to say how many, how what was our reach within Facebook ads? This is the problem that we're gonna run into. Let's, for example, add in a new page here and let's just say you know, we're using Facebook ads and we have the campaign, we then have the amount spent, right? We then have a uh, frequency, and then maybe we have uh, ROAS, for example. The problem we're gonna run into is the campaign is cool campaign. Amount spent was $4,500. The frequency of this campaign was 6.2, and the ROAS was uh, 4.7 because they're just crushing it. This works, right? We can have this over a day. But the second that we add in another column here of date, and we said this was January 1st, 2022, 2022, or the second, right? And then we just have this be right that. Same campaign, right? and the same campaign is existing. And then we have number of spent, let's just say today we spent 3,000 and here we spent 4,000, 5,000 and here we spent 2,000. Okay. Then our frequency, say our frequency went down here. So today it was three and then it was 4.2 and then it was 1.7. The problem we're gonna run into here is that this number is counting users over a period of time it could be the same number of people. So what could you do? You could say equals average. Average, right? And you could say, hey, it's an average of 3.7, but in actuality, it's not gonna be 3.7. The same thing goes for ROAS, right? If you have ROAS over days, but we're counting that amount of uh, over time, 
you might have a different amount. So these are a few things to look at, right? I just showed you, again, the practical guide to how to extract data, um, doing it in real world. I just showed you with GA4, I showed you how to use it, I showed you the problems, right? Users, not gonna work. Sessions, might work sometimes. Hits will always work. So do with that information as you like. Um, I'll probably create another video on how to kind of get around that user situation um, because we have managed to do that a couple of times for clients. Um, and as always, if you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments down below or shoot me an email. You can do some investigative work and find it and I'm ex always excited to answer a question. So without further ado, it's been a pleasure. Have a great rest of your day or evening.